And finally, before we move to the pledging session, I would like to invite Suma Chakrabarti, the President of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Well, thank you very much, Minister, and ladies and gentlemen. Um, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, EBRD, for short, is already responding vigorously to the tragedy and helping the refugee hosting communities in Syria's neighbors to manage the influx of refugees. Turkey and Jordan uh, are two of our most important countries of operation where our investment focused mainly in the private sector and support for policy reform is already having real results. And I expect very soon that Lebanon will be both a full member and a country of operations of the EBRD too. Our particular expertise at the EBRD is engaging with the private sector and bringing commercialized approaches to the public sector. So we, in the EBRD, we're currently focusing our efforts on supporting refugee hosting communities and regions in two main ways. One, municipal infrastructure, such as water, wastewater, solid waste, transport services. <coughs> All of these need upgrading and are under severe strain from the influx of refugees. The other uh, way of helping is through support for SMEs and early entrepreneurs via credit lines for local banks, direct financing, and know-how. We've got projects in uh, Turkey and Jordan ready to roll to meet these needs. We aim to finance up to 500 million euros in new transactions in these areas, subject to mobilizing an additional 400 million euros in grants from donors. In sum, a total of 900 million euros. That's the package. To contribute to the mobilization of grant funding, we're going to propose to shareholders an allocation from our net income of around 100 million euros over a period of three years from 2016 to 2018 subject, of course, to appropriate governance and the bank's continuing profitability. We're going to propose to shareholders an initial allocation of 35 million euros of our net income this year. On the specific issue of encouraging uh, the private sector involvement, we had a really important uh, event yesterday at our London headquarters. Uh, Imad Fakuri was there and other senior government representatives from Jordan, uh, Turkey and Lebanon were there. They briefed us on what they're doing to attract private investment. But in a session on employment and entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, we heard CEOs and other business figures call for access to markets to allow firms to grow and create jobs, less red tape within governments, within donors and within international institutions, a clear system of work and residence permits, that jobs for refugees really should not displace jobs for citizens uh, of hosting countries, access to finance for firms, including a need for grants, and uh, we heard a lot about education too, about skills mapping, data, and uh, training. Uh, and a training particularly for women and young people. We also had a panel on sustainable cities, very important because a municipality is under great pressure in the region. Three mayors told us that the very sustainability of their cities is at stake from the huge influx of refugees, hence the importance of municipal services work. So there are also, in my view, great opportunities for public and private partnerships, lessons to be learned from models that have worked in other regions of the world. But most importantly, my final point, we heard some extremely innovative business ideas. And we, in the EBRD, we need to move fast uh, to turn these from concept to reality through an action plan. And that's what we pledge to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, President Chakrabarti. Clearly, the EBRD has a critical role to play in mobilizing private sector support. Thank you very much for your commitment today. We now move to the second part of this plenary session, which is the pledging session.